Welcome to the Deep Dive Spirituality Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Brian Russell, and today this is going to be a solo cast, and I'm going to talk about how to craft healthy rhythms for thriving and flourishing in your life and in your mission as you seek to live out of your true self, out of your identity as a person created in God's image and as a person who's unconditionally loved by God. Uh, Before we get to that information, I want to talk about a couple of changes that you're going to notice over the coming weeks on the Deep Dive Spirituality Conversations podcast. First, I'm going to make a shift. Uh, Over the last year or so, I've been principally doing interviews with authors, particularly authors of books that are new releases. Now, I'm going to continue to do that as it's been a lot of fun to meet uh, authors and read books that I might not otherwise have had the chance to read. Uh, But I've sensed a a need to move away from doing almost exclusively those types of interviews to having interviews with with thought leaders in the realm of spiritual formation, mission, leadership that may not have actually written a book recently, may have written books decades ago even. So we're going to have conversations with with people that uh, that some of you may know and some that you may have not heard of previously, but I'm going to continue to try to bring some outstanding conversations to you on this podcast. And I'm also going to be offering more information and my own knowledge, including some return to some of my own sweet spots, which would involve both spiritual formation like this particular podcast today is going to talk about, but also biblical interpretation and try to give some really uh, deep insights into scripture. And so you're going to see some of those shifts over the coming days. I'd love to hear feedback. You can always reach out to me at my email at deepdivespirituality at gmail.com. And I'm also going to do some episodes uh, you, uh, illustrating some of the types of coaching that I do. And so, in a sense, these will almost be virtual coaching sessions. In a sense, today's episode is a little bit about that as we talk about how to create dynamic habits that fuel your soul. That's one of the things that I that is uh, central to my own work in my coaching program, which is called Deep Dive Spirituality. You can check out, if you want some information, go to deepdivespirituality.com. Uh, and you can look at some of the coaching materials that I do. I do one-on-one. I have a sort of signature program that I do with small groups of pastors. And coming in a couple of months, probably by the fall of 2022, I'm going to have a new program uh, created uh, that will be open to essentially anybody that wants to go deeper in their faith, deeper in their spiritual formation. And I'm going to call it Springboard. And that's going to be a little bit larger group program that I'm going to offer at uh, at a significant discount. So if you're interested in any of those things, you can check out deepdivespirituality.com. Uh, but let's jump into the, today's conversation, because one of the things that I think is vital to do at different times throughout the year is to do a check-in around how well are you doing in terms of thriving and flourishing in your relationship with God, in particular how that flows into your love for God and for your love for neighbor. And I'm going to use the illustration that I like to do when I talk about deep dive spirituality, which is what I, we usually think of as the Psalm one three, uh, Psalm one tree, and if you look at Psalm cha- Psalm one verse three, it reads, "That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers." And you know, when we think about a really fruitful, prosperous tree, we think about I think a fruit tree, and I try to draw this with nice, pretty fruit, but the key. The key to the tree that's described in Psalm 1 is the fact that its root system is rooted in streams of water. And if you do the deep dive into Psalm 1, you know that what that's talking about is you're literally tapping into Jesus. It's the waters that flow out of the temple. It's the waters that flow out of Eden. It's the tree of life itself. So how do you do that? 
Well, the first thing is, I think, is we want to do a check-in with ourselves in terms of how well are we actually thriving right now. And I think there's five areas that you can look at to see how your present rhythms are fueling you, again, to thrive and flourish in ministry. And I think those areas that you can look at, this may surprise you, but I think this these are the places where uh, either blessings flow in your life or the opposites will flow out of your life. And we can call these the five disciplines of self-leadership, but they're critical for spiritual formation because they point to the fruits of, of spiritual formation. Number one is, how are you doing with time right now? You know, one of the things that I think we see in our era, in our modern world of 24-7 busyness, is so often you think, geez, I wish I had time to do that. But ask yourself, how are you really doing with time? What are your biggest time crunches? Why does it feel like you don't have time to invest in your own spiritual formation or to live even more into that mission? Do you feel overwhelmed? That's a common word I hear today. And and what are the causes of you feeling overwhelmed? Are you able to get things done? So how are you doing with time? I think that's a great check-in. The second area is, what about energy? By the way, these are all related, right? So you know, how you, how's your energy? Or where are you losing energy? Do you know like what people drain you of energy? What projects drain you of energy? What situations drain you of energy? And do you also know which, what people, situations, and projects seem to fuel you with energy? How's your emotional life? And I'm talking about how well are you able to deal with anxiety, stress, and uncertainty? Yeah, those are the, the, the kind of the three musketeers of this whole COVID era, right? Everybody seems to be stressed out. Everybody seems to be anxious. We, when we get stressed over the complexity and all the uncertainty that floats around, and you know, I'm recording this in June of 2022, and I haven't sensed that anxiety has come down at all. But when you feel that way, it becomes really difficult to do what? To be present because you're either living in some imagined future that's stressing you out or you're kind of looping backwards to past experiences. And what that does is it robs us of being fully present. So how are you, how are you doing with your emotional life, with anxiety, stress, and uncertainty? Because if you don't get those three things right, the last two become incredibly difficult. And if you're a pastor or a spiritual leader or a husband or a wife or a, any any have any kind of relationships, what what where the things immediately kind of pour out is we see problems with our words. You know, are you able consistently to both the persons that you love? And also persons that even maybe you're in conflict with sometimes. But are you able to use powerful, inspiring, compelling, creative, loving language for good that draws people closer to God's love and doesn't push them away? So how's your words? Are you able to show up and be present and be an ambassador of God's abundance through your words? And then taking it down another layer... How well are you able to exercise power these days? You know, are you able to, and, and again, power is a, I don't mean that to me in a negative word, because we're not talking about powering up about people. And of course, we're not talking about abuse. But, you know, when you're le- positions of leadership in places where you have influence as a parent, as a, as a, uh, maybe a manager at work, as a teacher, as a pastor, whatever kind of uh, authority level you have, are you able to use your power, your influence, and your authority in healthy ways? that help those people above you to rise up and be closer to Jesus. You know, like I, th- I like to think when I serve a person, I try to imagine that behind that person are the 10,000 other souls that that person is going to reach at some point in their life. And so when I engage a person with words or in a context where I can exercise leadership or power, I want to make sure that I bless that person add value to them. So how are you doing? How's, how are you, where are you at in time, energy, emotions, words, and power? You know, you know I'm guessing, and, and this would be me too, it's like, do I hit 
a home run on all of us? The, the answer is no. And so, what I want, like to do then is when we frame about how, when we when, when we frame out how do we live a life that leads to greater levels of love for God or love for neighbor, we want to be able to take a honest appraisal of where we presently are. And I think those five areas, time, energy, emotions, words, and power is an easy check-in, right? And so to get back to the tree then, when we set up healthy rhythms, you know, what we're looking at is the point so that we can be that fruitful tree, that we can show up and minister and serve and bless other people as persons loved by God out of our true identity, again, most of the time. And so what we want to do is set up a, a series of practices, and we're going to talk about positive inputs and also eliminating negative inputs around this. Now, the classic language for what I'm going to talk about is rule of life. But I also think the phrase healthy rhythms, um, just rhythms, spiritual habits, spiritual disciplines, means of grace, all of those types of words are essentially synonyms for what I'm talking about today. In other words, we're trying to set ourselves up for success, order our day. Now, a good friend of mine, J.R. Woodward, and he you can look up back at earlier episodes, he's been my guest on this podcast. When I asked him about this rule of life question, he said, I like to imagine... Uh, what what are uh, a drone or a GoPro with a camera on it following us around for, say, a week, 24-7, recording everything that we do, and then taking that video and tracking out the time we spend different th doing different things and say that would be what our actual rhythms are, right? And that could be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? Like, uh, like what exactly is really shaping us right now? Because if you don't know, you might want to start there. But once you kind of figure out what is shaping, you want to ask yourself, do my habits, the practices that I do each day, do they actually draw me closer to Jesus or do they draw me further away from Jesus? And one of the ways that we can ensure that we're opening ourselves up to the Spirit's work, because again, Psalm 1 isn't saying you can make yourself into a fruitful tree. The only thing that we can do is make sure that we grow roots that can be rooted in Christ. He's the vine, we're the branches. So I'm going to talk about three areas when we're setting up some healthy rhythms that you want to think about. And this may sound different than what you hear from some spiritual teachers, because I'm not going to start with the explicitly spiritual yet. Though, in my mind, what I'm going to start with is spiritual, because what I'm going to talk about is the physical body first. And one of the great errors that we make in modern Christianity is we separate the physical body from the spiritual. When if you do a really careful study of words like soul and such, as they as they the words that are behind those English words in the Bible, there's no separation of a spiritual part of us and our physical body. You know, Jesus didn't have a spiritual part of him raised. It was his whole person was raised. We're going to have a resurrected body. So we want to think about how are we taking care of the body temple. And, and if you don't get the body temple right, sometimes the spiritual practices don't actually do any good. Uh, so, you know, for example, when we talk about the physical, when I like to do a check-in with the folks that I serve... When I'm talking to students and people that I coach and other people that I have the privilege of mentoring. One of the things I like to check in with is, is how are you doing on the physical and the three areas of the physical that I think you're, or four areas that you want to focus on foundationally are going to be uh, exercise or sleep first and then exercise, Sabbath including Sabbath as a physical principle, though it could show up in another area, and also diet. So let me say something briefly about those. I start with sleep because a lot of times the problems that we have in spiritual formation is that we're just really grumpy because we're tired. You know, you can't live a holy life. You can't deal with stress in the most difficult moments, if you're completely exhausted, you're going to get impatient, you're going to be grumpy, your brain isn't going to work well. And so one of the fundamental things that you need to give the, uh, yourself as a gift is make sure you're sleeping as often as you can, seven to eight hours every night. You know, sometimes there's days where you can't get that. And there's sometimes you do have to grind out a couple of uh, long days in a row. But here's the reality. Nobody can sustain a life 
without consistently getting an adequate amount of sleep. You know, you can say, well, Navy SEALs don't sleep. It's like, well, you know what? Navy SEALs can push three or four straight days without sleep because they're trained to do that. But that's only in extreme circumstances. And the rest of those days and the rest of their time, they're actually recovering from that. So don't compare yourself to a person that can burn all nighters unless you can see what that person looks like long game, right? So sleep, that's a spiritual practice. Look in the Psalms. We can sleep because God doesn't have to sleep. Then exercise. Uh, all of us, regardless of our age, are capable of some kind of bodily movements. I've watched my, my parents, and my parents are up in their late 70s now, and they still exercise. Now, it's not as vigorous as it used to be, but they still get out and walk every day. I see them stretching. They do really healthy things. And so, one of the things I can encourage you to do, especially if you're younger and you don't exercise, is start now. Take care of your body temple. Build up some muscle. Build up cardiovascular strength. All of those kind of things because that's going to help you as, your age, as you age. I really didn't start getting myself into decent shape until I was in about 42 years old. But over the last 11 years, I can say at 53 that I'm in better shape than I for sure than when I was 30 years old. And I'm glad to say that. Now that's mostly because I was in pretty bad shape when I was 30, but I'm in pretty good shape. I have a lot of energy and I'm planning on consistently doing that. So exercise is a spiritual practice. We're taking care of the body temple so that we can thrive and flourish long game in ministry, which then relates to, you might not think of this as a physical habit, but I think it is, Sabbath. Make sure that you give the gift of one full day when you can wake up not having worked the previous 24 hours. You know, don't do these little games where you'll just take a half hour or, or an afternoon off or a morning off. Take a full day off. You're going to be so glad that you did. And most importantly, the people that love you the most, as well as the people that you serve, are going to be really glad that you took at least one day for deep decompression, right? That's a physical practice because you're not going to work. And then diet. Again, I don't have any recommendations on what kind of diet to follow, but I wouldn't have you note this. Notice your energy drops during the day. I noticed in class, a lot of students lose their energy after lunch, and it's simply because they went out and ate too much sugar and carbs and stuff, and then they're falling asleep. And, and some of you know what I mean. And uh, you know, I can eat a, if I eat, a, I love bread. If I eat too much bread, I'm toast. A few hours, you get like a carb crash, right? Those are real things. So notice your diet, pay attention and find foods that fuel you so you can live consistently as your best. Because again, just like sleep, sometimes you're just hangry because you're hungry. You need a handful of nuts. You don't need a candy bar. You need some healthy snack that will fuel you so that you can show up and be your best. That's part of a deep dive spirituality. So the physical is a critical component. Uh, the second area that we want to look at when you're setting yourself up for thriving and flourishing is going to be the traditional, what we'll call the means of grace. You know, and what's here it's the things that you would expect to be here and the things that you probably thought I was going to name up front. It's things like, again, whether you know, if you don't put Sabbath up here, put Sabbath here. But how we deal with Scripture. Scripture fuels us. We, we, we actually need God's Word. So make it a must to do some engagement with Scripture every day if you can. Again, this isn't a, co a, a podcast to make anybody feel bad. But make sure that you're getting a steady diet of scripture. I'll talk in some other podcasts about how to read scripture at a deep level and some of the blocks to that, but you could just start off reading one chapter a day if you're not reading presently any chapters. That's all slowly build up. Obviously, if you want to get through the whole Bible in a year, you do three chapters, Monday through Friday, four on Saturday and Sunday, and you can just do different combinations, but make sure you're getting some scripture. Make sure you're worshiping you're spending time in prayer, um, doing some fasting occasionally, intentional fellowship. You want to be around people that support you, encourage you, and even speak truth when that's needed um, into your life. So find a, a small group or a, a group of people that you can have intentional spiritual conversations with. 
it's going to it'll change your life. So those are the means of grace, the traditional ones. And obviously you can we could also throw in Eucharist and there's other things that you can put in there, but these are the typical things that you think the Christian life would look like. But make sure you find a way to make those different elements work in the way that your personality works. So that's the second thing. And then the third area that we want to talk about is what I'm going to call contemplative practices. And this literally is the, this part of spiritual formation that's changed my life over the last 12 years now. You know, I have my book, Centering Prayer, Sitting Quietly in God's Presence Can Change Your Life, that really tells the story of how um, silent, meditative prayer brought me back to life, um, restored me to even a deeper relationship with God that I had previously, has opened me up to ongoing growth. And actually, if I wouldn't have started doing Centering Prayer, this podcast wouldn't exist. I wouldn't be as an effective classroom teacher as I am at Asbury, and I certainly wouldn't be doing any coaching. It's literally opened me up to deeper levels of God's grace. If you have questions about Centering Prayer, you can check out my playlist on my YouTube channel, uh, Deep Dive Spirituality with Dr. Brian Russell, or you can sign up for updates at centeringprayerbook.com. I do week or monthly centering prayer gatherings with another author named Rich Lewis. And uh, if you sign up on that site, I'll send you some information on how to get a centering prayer practice started yourself or to deepen your own one. So centering prayer is a key practice here. And by the way, I'm not suggesting that everybody needs to do all of these contemplative practices, but I want to introduce a couple of these. Another one that you can do, and I'll do a podcast on this in the future, would be, this is a way to read scripture, Lectio Divina. And this is basically learning to do deep meditative work and contemplation on the scriptures as a means of connecting with God. A lot of people find that practice really helpful with or without the centering prayer. I'm also a huge proponent of journaling. And this is intentional journaling. So like my two contemplative practices that I do literally every day and I've essentially been doing for over 10 years now is journaling and centering prayer game changer. I do a modified version of the prayer of examine. E-X-A-M-E-N. This has its roots in Ignatian spirituality. Uh, and, but, and just to give you an idea of what I do, and I've been doing this for years, and so you can stack my journals together and see where I was at any moment over the last 10 plus years, actually almost 12 years now. And what I do virtually, or actually every day, I don't think I've actually missed this. I have missed some centering prayer days here and there, but the journaling I haven't missed in over a decade. Every day when I wake up, I write down five things that I'm grateful for to God. And, and, the, and the key there, because it can get repetitious, is you got to feel it in your heart. So feel gratitude. The scriptures continually tell us to give thanks. So what are you thankful for? Write down five things. That'll change your morning and the rest of your day right there. Because you, if you feel gratitude, you can't. You're not going to feel angry. You're not going to feel... Uh, down. You're not going to feel discouraged. You're not going to feel mad or victimized. You're going to be grateful. And there's always something to be grateful for, even if it's just the fact that you can still breathe. So pra I practice gratitude every morning. And then what I do is I kind of do a mental dump. I ask myself, is there anything bothering me? And you got to be radically honest. The whole basis for all of this you know, all progress starts with telling yourself the truth. So here in this journal, I, what's bothering me, I, you know, I write all kinds of things. And obviously, I would not want people to read everything that I've ever written there. But I've let go of so many things by taking the time to literally write out what I think's bothering me. And then I always ask what else. And a lot of times, the first thing I write down is there's actually something deeper going on there. And just writing those things down ends up being like a prayer. I'm giving that to God. So give God the things that are bothering you the most. He knows what they are anyway. Name them. And the journaling can help you with that. Again, centering prayer helps as well. 
And then I write down what would make today a great day. You know, what are a couple of things? If I could hit these, this would be a wonderful day. And then at the end of the day, this only takes like, the first part might take five minutes. This last part takes like 30 seconds or less. At the end of the day, before I go to bed, I write down what three things went really well. Now on a good day, that's a piece of cake. And sometimes I'll have seven, 10 things that went really well. But on the bad days, make yourself harvest something good. Maybe it was a lesson, but something probably went good. And you can see God working, even if it was a tough day. Give yourself that gift. And you can honestly say, if you start with gratitude in the morning and then give thanks for three things at night, you're basically going to be on what Dan Sullivan would say, a perpetual winning streak with your life right there. So this, so set yourself up. And again, you don't have to do everything that I just said. But put together a plan that allows you to thrive and flourish as your best self. Because if you get this stuff right, right, and this is going to be things you're going to do at different times of the day, you're opening yourself up to the work of the Spirit in your life. And that's going to end up with some fruit, right? Now, this is the positive side of spiritual formation. You know, I've noticed, though that if you do this without the next thing I'm going to talk about, um, this may not do any long-term good because just like in a sport, you have to have both an offense, but you also have to have defense. And a question that I find really helpful to ask myself as I check in and think about things is simply this. What is it in my life right now that I'm merely tolerating. In other words, what are my tolerations? What am I tolerating right now? Because when you look at your tolerations, you may find things that are actually deforming you instead of these things forming you. And so what the goal then is you want to eliminate things that are deforming you. Like, you know, for example, I've come to a, a place now in early June that I've just noticed um, my presence on Twitter, and I still will post some of my content, but the more time I spend on Twitter, the more discouraged I get about the whole world. And Twitter's fake, and I even know it. And I just realized, you know what? I don't need to be on here. So I'm going to have a much smaller Twitter foot, uh, footprint because I think it was slowly deforming me, even though I'm trying to put positive, good things up, just reading all the negativity that shows up there. That's deforming me. And, and I wouldn't say Twitter's a sinful practice, but just notice, I noticed that that was deforming me and I was tolerating something that was um, discouraging me. So I'm gonna eliminate that. Um, what toxic people are you tolerating? Are you tolerating people treating you really poorly? Do you have mediocre friendships? And again, that may be on you partially, so just stick with me for a second. We're not judging people. Are, are you having dissatisfaction in some of your relationships with your spouse, with your children? Uh, are you finding you have inadequate time to do your rule of life, your soul-enhancing practices? Do you have problematic things that are obviously bad that you're tolerating right now? You dip in your toes. I have a friend um, who'd struggle with alcohol in the past, and he talks, he calls it sin sipping. What sin sipping are you tolerating right now? Are you repressing negative emotions? Like, are you just seething on the inside and you're tolerating being angry on the inside while trying to keep a smile on your face? You know, what are you tolerating? You're tolerating being sad all the time. Eliminate those things. And how do you do that, right? It's easier said that, oh, that's easy for you to say, just eliminate them. Well, well here's what you need to, what we need to do from a spiritual formation practice. And this is where I think a small group can help, a coach, even a therapist if you need. You know, get curious about what's really going on when you find that you've been tolerating something that's actually working against you. What's really going on? take 100% responsibility for it, right? Now we know in relationships, it's never 100% you. It's, it, it takes two to tango, so to speak, and all those things, but you take 100% for your side of a relationship. 
is when you do that, you get agency because you're not a victim. You're not even a victim of the things you tolerate. Take agency. Take 100% responsibility. And then put together a plan and take action to get rid of it. Right. And that may involve, involve finding help if, if it's something, you know, bigger than just like saying, hey, I'm going to spend less time on Twitter, but but find help. And then the key to all this is, you know, don't judge yourself. Be ruthless when you're trying to eliminate something that you're tolerating. Be ruthless in practicing self-compassion and self-care so that you can use the elimination of something you're tolerating to grow and to learn, not just to beat yourself up. So that's the positive and the negative. That's the offense and the defense. Because if you get those two elements right, you're going to be fruitful. And you're going to be ready to play a long game. That's one of the things I love about Psalm 1. It's fruitful in season and out, in, and out of season. Its leaves never wither. So, you know, like for me, I'm 53. You know, I like this. I always say I'd love to live to be 100 and I'd love to be really healthy all the way till maybe say 99. And then I just, you know, slowly decline that last year. So if, I, if I'm 53 and I want to make it to 99, I need to play a long game. And again, you may be in your 70s and you may be looking closer towards uh, the end of your sojourn on this earth, or you may be 20 and say, wow, if I could live to be 100, I have 80 years. But think about this. Have you set yourself up to play the long game and not just to take a sprint and burn yourself out? Part of spiritual formation is remembering that life is an ultra marathon. It's not a sprint. And we got to learn to not compare ourselves to people that we only see sprinting when we don't see what they do to recover from the sprints. And we think they do that all the time because nobody can sustain a crazy sprinting life without running into a wall at some place. So we want to play a long game. Treat your ministry like it's a marathon. Treat your life like it's a marathon, not a sprint. You'll be glad you did and you'll thrive and you'll be closer to that Psalm 1 tree. So the last metaphor I want to do, then I'm going to close out this. So we, we've talked about essentially the elements that you put into a, a rule of life. We've talked about some signals, right? Time, energy, emotions, or words and power that can be signals that something's lacking. But the last thing we want to do is we also want to have some kind of a check engine light before we blow an engine or get a flat tire to help mark those things out. Now, those five indicators up front can function as a check engine light. You know, what do I mean by that? I, like, I have a Honda Civic, and I like to tell the story on the 10-year the anniversary of meeting my wife, Astrid. We were uh, on a date, and we were going back to a Panera Bread where we first met. So that'd be kind of fun, go get a cup of coffee. By the way, we'd had a nice dinner first, so I wasn't just being cheap by going to Panera. But we'd had this really nice dinner. I said, hey, you know, let's drive down to the Panera where we met the first time for our first date. You know, of course, we get down there, and it's closed for remodeling, which was kind of funny. But then the next thing I knew, the tire pressure lights going off on the Honda Civic. And I'm thinking, like, my gosh, this is my 10-year anniversary. I got a flat tire. And so I got out and looked at the car. I'm like, well, I can't tell if the tires didn't look like it's flat. And like, well, so I and I drove basically just a short distance. Um, went to a gas station, and I went to the air pump, and I checked all four tires. And what was really interesting is I think my tire pressure is supposed to be 35, I think, on all four tires or whatever it's supposed to be. But literally, all it was was down maybe five pounds. But the Civic was sensitive enough that the light came on even though I was only down a little bit. So it was giving me a warning well in advance to me having a significant problem with my tires. So set up some systems in your life that can function as check engine lights so it doesn't take while I'm doing, I'm having a hard time with time, I'm stressed out, I have no energy, I'm being nasty with words, and I'm using power inappropriately. Those are big signals. You want something more subtle. So set up a check engine light for yourself. That can be people that you're in community with. 
And like, and for me, like my check engine light, it's my journaling. I keep track of my, of how many of, if I do centering prayer, what scriptures I'm reading, and then, you know, the journaling practice that I said to you. And usually if I'm doing my journaling practice, right, I also add in quotes that I like and, and insights. I'll do maybe two days on a page. So for me, when I find I'm looking at a page and I've done like three or four and I'm on my fifth day and I'm still on a single page, that's a subtle signal that something may not be off because I'm not really getting much in the journal. So I just step back and do a check-in and then I review what's going on well in advance of me getting in a place where you know I burn out, I suddenly feel overwhelmed or the things that, that happen when we get out of whack with our rhythms. I hope this was really helpful for you. I'd love to hear some feedback about my new ideas for the format for the podcast. Again, you can reach out to me at deepdivespirituality at gmail.com. If you have interesting guests that you'd like me to, to speak or authors you'd like to reach or just give me some feedback, I'd love to hear from you. And also, if you're interested, again, in some of my coaching programs, uh, check out deepdivespirituality.com. And if you just want more information about the, my, the, a lot of the free stuff that I put out, my blog, uh, YouTube, the various places that I post things out in, on the web, you can go to brianrussellphd.com. Uh, Again, it's a real privilege to serve you today. Thank you for listening all the way to the end. Until next time, live by faith, be known by love, and be a voice of hope to others.